Hey, Aubrey, how was your weekend? It was fantastic. How was yours? It was good. It was quite rainy here. James had a soccer tournament. Uh, my brother came out to watch the games. So... How did he do in the tournament? Well, they <laughs> didn't do that great. <laughs> but it was still fun. <laughs> it was still really fun. And you know what? They did their best. And it was fun. It I was went to my daughter Gigi's soccer game and she, she's newer maybe she was talking about how she's never scored a goal and she's so frustrated oh. she's like i've never scored a goal and meanwhile the other girls on her team are like scoring goals left and right you know yeah. and so it's really tricky to be like you know what that's not what's important just do your best just keep <laughs> trying we love watching regardless it's hard to yeah. not <laughs> care about winning or being the goal scorer right Especially yeah for kids but i mean me too i get it I know for sure. Um, and we know you guys care about scoring highly on IELTS. So we're here to help you come up with great ideas for writing task two, specific ideas for writing task two. Um, we had a wonderful question from a Spotify listener. We're getting a lot of comments there. Guys, remember you can ask us questions in Spotify. You can ask us questions in reviews for this podcast or you can email us support at all ears um guys do remember to hit follow right now though wherever you're listening so you don't miss an awesome episode yes one of our really recent ones was such a great vocab episode a student so had asked us if it's okay to use get on ielts and we talked about why you shouldn't because you're replacing really high scoring vocabulary so scroll up if you missed that one it was 1328 don't mm -hmm. use get on ielts and like jessica said hit follow so you never miss any of these great episodes Awesome. All right. So let's get into this question, guys, from Agnesia Mayola. I hope I said that okay. If not, um, we apologize. I apologize on behalf of Jessica's breast. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds right. I think you're right. <laughs> I hope so. Thank you for apologizing for me. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> We're a team here at IELTS Energy. All right, guys, so here's the question. It's really hard for me to process ideas while writing, especially in writing task two. How can I elaborate the ideas simply and... I th she says right to the case, but I think she means like suitable to the topic, you know, like, yeah, like staying right to the point, right? Staying on topic. I think totally. So. so yeah. Okay. So basically guys, Agnesia is asking, how do I come up with great specific appropriate ideas on writing task two while I'm writing? That's the question. So Aubrey, what is our first piece of advice here? Yes, the first advice is don't think of ideas while you're writing, yeah. right? All of that should happen in the brainstorm, which should be very separate. You are brainstorming your ideas, details and examples for those ideas. And by the time you start writing, you should have a very clear map of what you're going to write. And then if you are coming up with new ideas while you're writing, you're wasting time, you're doing something wrong. Exactly, guys. Do not come up with ideas while you're writing. Um, later in this episode, we're going to share a recent IELTS Task 2 question, and we're going to give you examples for a brainstorm for this. We're going to actually show you some real um, high-scoring examples and details that you can use in writing Task 2. Um, so let's talk about first, though, what kind of ideas are the options even? What do examiners want to see? Well, in order to get a seven or higher for task on writing task two, you have to expand on your ideas. So that's why we tell you, don't just put as many ideas as you can into each paragraph. And that's often what happens when you're thinking of ideas while you write. You're not fully exploring one idea. You're just saying, and this, and this, and this. And that cannot get a six or higher for task, right? We have to elaborate or expand on ideas. Um, so what are our options here? Like, how do we expand on ideas? 
right? You want to look for evidence, proof from real people, you know, real places, real times. This is the best way to convince the examiner that your idea makes sense, right? That it's valid, that it's justified. You, you can use examples from your life, your friends, yourself as your details and examples so that whatever idea you're coming up with, this gives it weight. This expands on that idea. Exactly. So while you're brainstorming, guys, you're thinking of reasons, you know, let's take, for example, um, why should we keep libraries open? Maybe that's, I always, I always use libraries <laughs> as an example. Why should we keep libraries open? Um, and the reasons are, you know, more general. They're not specific. Maybe one reason is um, because they are extremely beneficial for children. You have to expand on that. You have to say why. You have to give specifics, okay? That's what we're talking about when we say expanding. You have to talk about, like we said, specific people, specific places, specific times. And um, here's the good news, guys. You are adults with a life of experience. You, you know enough in your brain from your own life um, that you can come up with examples for anything. Absolutely. If you don't have a child of your own, you can absolutely talk about a niece, a nephew, a neighbor, yourself as a child, right? Yeah. You know somebody that that would affect. If that's your reason, like kids need libraries, use an example from your own life. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So Aubrey, can you read a recent task to question, please? Yeah, so here's the question. The rise of social media platforms has made it easier for people to vent their frustrations and complaints publicly. What is the consequence of this trend? Is there any benefit to expressing complaints on social media? Ooh, this is a this is a hot topic. Definitely. Um, <laughs> I could definitely imagine this coming up in writing task two or speaking part three on IELTS. I think this, I would imagine this being more likely as a speaking question, honestly, but we did see a report that this was a recent task two question. So, and I love that we're using this one because I can definitely see a topic like this leading you guys to, to listing a whole bunch of reasons. Cause you're thinking, yeah. Oh, there are so many consequences. I can think of so many and you fill a whole paragraph and you list all of them with no time to support them all. That's still going to be a very low scoring essay because you haven't expanded on your ideas. Totally. Oh, a hundred percent. I, I definitely can't imagine a student like get like writing the consequences paragraph and just saying, um, like bullying kids and depression and people losing friends and be, like, it just totally just a whole bunch of, reasons. A bunch of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, but remember guys do slow down and read the question carefully because this is basically like an advantage disadvantage question. Right. And a lot of those questions are presented in a plural form. Like what are the benefits of this phenomenon or whatever? This question does not say that, right? So it says, what is the consequence? It's asking for one, right? So you have to just give one general consequence and support that. And same with the benefit, right? Any benefit, it's singular. Yeah, this is an interesting question because yeah. consequence really could mean something positive, a positive consequence, but because yeah. of how it's worded where the second question is like, all right, well, is there any benefit that mm -hmm. is implying a negative consequence in that first question that it's it, disadvantages yeah. and advantages? Totally, totally. Um, now, this is a wonderful example, right? Because everybody is on social media. And even if you're not on social media, you have reasons for not being on there. <laughs> right. The fact is, you're an adult in the world. You know about this stuff, okay? So we go to our own minds when we're coming up for proof, for support. Um, so Aubrey, what is a negative consequence of this trend? 
Yeah. So the consequence I would use, I immediately go to my personal experience, would be ruining relationships or hurt feelings among family members. And I would use the example of Facebook that I'm sure I'm not the only one out there who has seen on social media, someone post comments that offends someone else. And now people who don't know each other are engaging in the comment section. And because of the anonymity of social media, they will say things things more harshly, right? More, they're not as kind as they would if they had this argument in public and that Mm -hmm. it can lead to this people unfollowing, hurt feelings. Now no one's talking to each other. So this would be a very easy consequence for me to defend with real life personal examples. Exactly. And let's say, um, Let's say, you know, the first example that comes to mind is like um, my brother or something. And maybe you're like, I don't want to talk so badly about my brother. That's okay. Just make up a friend, you know, just say it's like a person. Um, So can you think of a specific example that you would put in this paragraph? Yes. So my friend, he he posted uh, something political, but quite even, you know, just sort of his opinion on Facebook. And then in the comments section, people he knew who had very varying political opinions started arguing about it and it sort of became more and more harsh. Um, And then, and I actually unfollowed this friend because I'm seeing those posts come up in my feed and it's very negative. It's very inflammatory and extreme. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't want to have to read this stuff. Right. So that kind of thing can, you know, it has consequences in real life with people's relationships. Now I'm going to push back a little bit and say like that, that is a wonderful example for sure, but we could show even stronger support and more vocabulary. If you are more specific, if you say an exact political issue, for example, Mm. like that would bring up more um, vocabulary than just saying like a political post. That's a good point, right? I'm staying really general. Whereas if I (laughs) I know this was about the election, this was when Trump was running for the presidency. And I could, yeah, this would bring up more interesting vocabulary if I say that, right? You know, name my friend and then share posted his support of Trump and then, yeah, I get really specific. So here's the, here's the, I'm going to present a benefit. Cause I know like that's probably a more difficult thing to think of mm, for this one. For sure. Um, but I do want to just hammer this point home guys. This is the biggest takeaway today is that in your support, you need to be as specific as possible, right? We can't just say like a post, for example, that's not an example, right? You have to say like, what was the post about? You know, what did Mm -hmm. it say? Who was this? Like, what were the number of people that unfollowed them or something? So Mm. just push yourself to be as specific as possible. So I also want to give you guys another little bonus strategy here for when you're brainstorming. When I was trying to think of a benefit, for example, I'm like real people, real places, real times, like going through our strategy. I actually came up with an example first. And then after that, I extrapolated. That's a good word. I extrapolated the reason. Um, And that I think is very useful if you are, if you feel stuck, you're like, I can't think of a reason. Like what's an overall benefit? I don't Mm. know think of an example first. So the example I thought of, it's happening right now. It's very current. The um, teachers in Portland Public School District are on strike right now. And from an outsider view, someone might say, oh, like, oh, they just want more money. Like, that's why people strike. They just want higher salaries. However, I um, have seen my teacher friends posting on Instagram and Facebook, and they are they are explaining their strike demands like smaller class sizes, more help with special needs students, right? So this actually serves to educate the public with these real quote unquote frustrations and complaints, right? Um, So after I could write about that example, I think, oh, like that's the reason these posts can actually serve to educate the public. Oh, I think that's such a good example. And I'm glad we did cover this because I agree. I think this might be really hard if someone has really only seen negatives from social media and then you're asked, is there any benefit? 
you can't just say, no, I don't think there is, <laughs> right? You have to come up with something and that's where you might have to get a little creative. You've seen this where, you know, opinions are shared and it's educating the public and, and that's the type of thing that you're, you have to think like, okay, there are some benefits. I need to be able to share one here with some details. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and like I said, guys, if you can't, if you feel stuck, if you can't think of a benefit, you know, if you can't think of whatever reason for the topic, just go to your little mind palace, right? Focus on the topic, social media, people um, posting opinions, saying they're frustrated, maybe complaining about something. Think of some examples that you've seen. There has to be something that is a positive to come out of one of these things. Yeah, absolutely right. Come up with the example and then build from there. What's the benefit? Awesome. Awesome. Remember, guys, you can ask us a question and be featured on a future episode. You can ask us in Spotify or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, CastBox, wherever you listen. Um, and guys, do remember to hit follow right now because we have another fantastic episode coming up tomorrow. Yeah. Awesome. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.